All right. Essential skills number 13. So this, woo, we're getting there, man. If you don't have enough to study, you got lots of stuff to study. By the way, you know, if you want this, if you have a printer, or if you have the option of printing this, or you can get your teacher to print some of these for you, it's at www.nkinfinity.com. The best thing you can do, print these, try these on your own. If you're just watching the video because you can't get them printed, then, you know, I guess that's okay. But pause the video so you can see what's going on. Notice it's at NK Infinity. You'll know you get there when you see my ugly mug. I'm a partner in crime. Go to New York State Teachers. Click on Review. And then go down to Regions Review Topics. And there we go. Bunch of them coming, right? Working on, what am I working on right now? Sequences? I don't think that one's called Sequences. We're going to change the name of this one. Apparently, 13 is now called Inverse Relations and Functions. So I will switch that. I don't know why that's called Sequences. I almost made a penny from Dunkin' Donuts the other day. <laughs> Actually, I would have just found one on the floor in the Dunkin' Donuts if I would have made one because they're not paying me anything. But that's okay. I'm still drinking their coffee. You don't care. I know you don't care. Don't tell me you don't care. I don't care that you don't care. All right, let's get going. Let's talk about inverse relations and functions. What are we going to do with this stuff? All right. So to find an inverse, the simple thing about fin finding the inverse, the thing you have to remember, the big thing you have to remember is switch X and Y. If you see this word, you're going to just switch X and Y. So in this case, and we just go 3, 2. Negative 4, comma, negative 3. And 5, comma, 4. Is, so this would be F inverse. F negative 1 of X. If, this, if the original was F of X. So is your inverse a function? Explain your reasoning. So if it's a function, you have no repeating X values. No repeating X values. All of these are the same. So yes, in fact, it is a function. So if you wanted to, you could write each, we'll spell each right, each x has one and only one y value. Otherwise, there's no repeating x values. All right, graph the inverse of the function um, of g of x. This thing's sort of in my way. So the easiest way to graph the, these is just to find a few points. Maybe I guess those, we could try those points. You know, and this point is 1, 2, so we'll go 2, 1. Let me draw, draw it a different color. 2, 1. Boom, right there. The other one was 0, negative 1, so negative 1, 0, right there. And 1, negative 1, negative 2, so negative 2, negative 1, I guess there. Now, remember, you can always think about it this way. There are always reflections over the line y equals x. So how's this going to go? This is going to go like this. Like that. Kind of look like reflections over the line x. Is g of x a one-to-one -one function? Yes. It is a one-to-one -one function because, one, the inverse, which is this is, f uh, inverse, excuse me, g inverse of x. g inverse is a function because it passes the horizontal or vertical line test. Uh, a normal function is a one-to-one -one function if the original function fat passes both the horizontal and lo vertical line test. So it passes both vertical line test, and that's the test for a function, and the horizontal line test. All right, let's do a couple of algebraic questions. You should know that you need to switch x and y. So we're going to get x equals 4 over 3x y minus 1 half. Now, I have to tell you, I cannot stand having fractions. I got to get this, I got to get rid of this th four thirds eventually anyway. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by six. Now, why six? Because that's the common denominator here. So, I'm, if I multiply both sides by six, on this side I get six x. On this side, if I 
distribute the 6 here, I get 24 over 3. Or if you multiplied 4 thirds times 6, you'd get 8. Y minus 3. Now I just have to solve for y. Bring the 3 over. So I get 6x is, oops, excuse me, 6x plus 3, because I added 3 over, equals 8y. Divide by 8, divide by 8, divide by 8, and I get 6 over 8x plus 3 eighths equals y. And that would be the inverse. Verify that g of x and f of x are inverses. So I think the probably the easiest one to do is to just take f of x and, well, first of all, let me write it as y equals 3x minus 6. I'm going to show you two ways of doing this problem. Um, all right, let's switch them. x equals 3y minus 6. Bring the 6 over. x minus 6 equals 3y. Divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3, and I get... Uh, x, one-third x minus 2 equals y, which is what that is. Oh, it should be plus 2, right? Because when I bring this over, it should be plus. Woo! Need some more coffee. Another way to tell, and this is outside the scope of this new curriculum, but this is something a little extra for somebody. If you do f of g of x, if they're inverses, if inverses, if you do f of g of x, you should get equal x out, if they're inverses. So if I do f of 1 third x plus 2, I want to make sure that this is equal to x. So I'm going to plug this into the f function. So I do 3 times x, 1 third x plus 2, minus 6. So this is equal to 3 times 1 third is x, 3 times 2 is plus 6, minus 6 equals 6, equals 0, because the 6 is canceled. So that's another test for inverse, to see if they're inverses of each other. Okay, I'm back. Thanks for coming back. Ah, find the inverse of set A. Is A 1 to 1? Let's find the inverse first. So it's 2 comma 1, um, 3 comma 2, Four comma three and five comma four. So in order to tell if it's an inverse, uh, if it's a one, if is it a one to one function? We first have to tell if it's a function. Do I have any repeating x values? No. One, two, three, four. Then when I take the inverse, do I have any repeating x values? Two, three, four, five. So yes, one to one function. No repeating x's, no repeating y's. If the point A, B lies on this graph of this, contains what points? Well, remember, if A, B is on f of x, then B, comma A, which is its inverse, will lie on the inverse function. Lies on inverse function. Sounded a lot more complicated than it was, but that's all there is to it. Graph f it, let's graph f of x. So again, let's, they gave us nice points. So what we're going to do is we're going to reflect them over the line. I'm going to reflect them over the line y equals x. This is a lot easier when you're just doing with graphing and you just type in this line y equals x. And we'll reflect those. So if I reflect this point, I'm going to reflect these three points right here. Point over. So reflect this one over, I get this. Reflect this one over, I get this. And reflect this one over, I get this. So it looks like this. Boom. And it should have crossed actually right there. All right, let's try this one. Same thing. We're going to reflect over the line y equals x. So this one goes 1, 2, 1, 2. 1, 2, 1, 2. And this one's actually on the other side, like over here somewhere. I just do that all the time. So, man, that was crazy to draw. And put an arrow on it, so this would be f inverse of x. And this would be called f inverse of x. You should label it. What transformation produces the inverse of a function? Hold on a second.
Man, I thought this was a lot longer than this. Well, I've already said it in the last two problems. How do I find an inverse of a function? I just reflect it. It is a reflection over the line or in the line y equals x. Ooh, man. All right, so what we're going to do first, we're going to write this as y equals log base 3 of x. Now, most kids just immediately start changing its form. They go, oh, 3 to the y equals x. No, 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 no. First things first is always true with, with uh, finding the inverse. You have to switch your x and y. So x equals log base 3 of y. Then we can go switch its base because the inverse of a log is an exponential. So I'll go, okay, 3, that's all about that base, about that base. 3 to the x is equal to y. And this would be the inverse. So f inverse of x, now don't call it y, is equal to 3 to the x. Now, if you ever doubt yourself, graph them. Come over here and graph them. Use your graphing calculator tool. Abuse your graphing calculator calculator tool. Log base 3 of x. Boom. Simple log function. Press tab. Now do 3 to the x. Now if you don't know, menu, oops, excuse me, escape, tab, graph the line y equals x. Are they reflections of each other on that line? Of course they are. Of course they are. Of course they are. So again, even though I've given the inverse, I still can find it. I'm going to say y equals negative 3 over 4x plus 2. Finding an inverse is, either way, you just switch x and y. So we switch x and y. So I get x equals negative 3 over 4y plus 2. Now, because I want to get rid of that 4, I don't care about the 3 right now. Right now, I just want to get rid of that 4. I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. So I get 4x equals, here the 4s cancel. When I distribute to here, the 4s cancel. So I get negative 3y plus 8. Now I want to solve for positive y. So what I'm actually going to do is bring this over to here and bring this over to here. So I end up with 3y equals negative 4x plus 8. Divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3. So I get... Uh, f of x, remember they gave us the inverse, is equal to negative 4 over 3x plus 8 thirds. Now, if you're not sure if that's right, graph it. Let's clear this out. Don't, don't save. Go back into graph mode. What was the original? Negative 3 fourths. Now, sometimes these are hard. Negative 3 divided by 4x plus 2. This one might be hard to see that they're inverses. And then the other one, press tab. Uh, negative 4 over 3, negative 4, oops, press tab, negative 4 divided by 3x plus 8 thirds, plus 8 divided by 3. Uh, that's kind of hard to tell. Oops, control Z. That's kind of hard to tell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph the line y equals x. So press, t press tab. Why are you doing that? Press tab. And just type in the line x. Escape, escape, tab, x. So are they reflections over the line y equals x? They actually are. They're just kind of hard to tell there. All right, given that and that, the inverse of g of x is a function, but the inverse of f of x is not a function. Explain why. All right, so if I graph g of x, it looks like this. This is g of x, or this is f of x, excuse me. This does not pass the horizontal line test. And because it does not pass the horizontal line test, or it fails the horizontal line test, therefore, not one to one. It is a function because it passes the vertical line test, but it does not pass the horizontal line test, therefore, it is a not a one to one function. While if I graph the two to the x function that looks like this, it's just a simple exponential function, this will pass the horizontal line test and the vertical test all day long, so this is a function. All right, kids, inverses, they're not that difficult, very simple, straightforward, nice job with that. Um, okay, that's it. Toodles.